I am Jeffrey Rogue Kohut. This is my Potter's Journal for late summer now, 2024. I have been making 400 wedding cups, okay, table gifts for a wedding. First one out of the kiln, okay. In today's kiln load, though, it's not only this, it's only a few as a test. Okay, I want to get the right degree of um, water in the glaze, the right thickness. We're going to test it out with light, medium, and heavy on the glaze um, to see which way we like it. Okay, what happens though if I like it one way and they like it the other? Maybe the radical thing is to go with a compromise, find a mid-ground. Also in this kiln, when it rains, it pours. Well, it hasn't been raining. I've been irrigating the nursery non-stop. But also on top of 400 of the little wedding cups. Okay, the olive tap caught me and said we need our order uh, by early September for the fall, for the Christmas holiday season. So that's in here too. Okay, let's see what's in the kiln today. What is in the kiln today? Well, I am in the midst of making 400 wedding cups with a little medallion on them, MN, and that is the first thing I want to see with each batch is if that actually turned out, and it did, because I don't know how many are in here, but um, if something goes wrong, I'm on a deadline. <laughs> oh, I could have some late night working and um, a lot of making up to do. But looks like this firing, another good one with that. Um, and originally it was to be a wedding cup with a spout, which um, I found is so, um, something that is in Slovenian culture. So I did a whole bunch of these with um, different designs on. Here is the Queen Anne's lace, kind of tight in bud, but just to experiment with designs, I put something different on the other side. These little things, um, I'm anxious to get to market and see how they go. The little, it's smaller than batter bit pitch batter bowls. But I'm um, doing 400 of these. I don't want you to get bored, so I do want to have other stuff in here. And this will have a um, little spout in for pouring olive oil or vinegar. Um, some uh, br black slip on there with the blue over top. And this was combed through. So I should have put the spout in there for you to see the finish. Not wanting you to get bored, though, with 400 shots all the same. Okay, always looking for what's seasonal, what's in the moment, what is, you know, at this time, 2024. Okay, we've got the unburdened. Okay, the unburdened mugs. And let's see what else. And, and another, another unburdened. Okay, with the coconut. And let's see another one, 2024. And we've got the brat mug. Okay, I don't know what it is exactly. So, I'm told it's been grabbed by two sides of an issue. We'll see if something in the moment is popular here at the farmer's market. And with our little espresso or shot shots, we kind of go through and... Oh, there's the 2020. I can't see through the camera lens. Okay, and we've got the similar design, but we do have the... Okay, I think that's called BEM diagram. Or, um, understanding certain things. And we've got, just to repeat, I think for the Scraffito here, I'm not sure. I used a smaller scratcher, but I, I think I could have used a little bit larger scratcher. And the glaze looks a little bit thick right there for reading what's underneath. But, um, actually, no, these, these turned out okay. These turned out okay. We'll see. Um, and I always have some of these cups, mugs, and shots um, dipped in the slip as greenware, ready to go, in case something in the moment comes up and we need to get a Scraffito plate out in no time at all. And to make best use of the kiln space here, we've got a half shelf, and perfect, the last time um, I needed some spoon rests in a minute, and they were made. I just needed to glaze them. Last time, the sea mist was a little bit thin, 
but this time it came out just perfect and a little bit thin on one side but it reads the design underneath very nicely so we um, yeah that shelf was only one inch tall but no we didn't waste any space and when it rains it pours I'm also working on an order for the olive tap and here's those olive oil garlic grater dipping plates where I take most of the glaze off with a brush a wet brush and a sponge the same as I did on the wedding cups for the um, okay uh, monogram and the reason I do that because uh, do we really want raw clay there this way it gives it a little bit of gloss and we don't lose the ability to actually grate the garlic on and these are the little garlic um, or oil dipping plates for the olive tap now here unlike the top shelf with the this is a test this glaze this load is a test um, I took the bucket of glaze and I took one cup of water or was it two I'll have to check my notes so compared to the top shelf I think it was uh, yeah it's I think it might have been a quart but here we can see the underlining a bit better than we can um, on the shots so we may make some adjustments this is a test so the top shelf the sea mist was full strength with the combing through the black slip and here it is at medium and the bottom it will be at okay even lower yet so we've got this is the compromise we've got um, then two sides of the glaze thickness issue okay which way do you like it I think the olive tap is gonna be happy one more And here we go again when it rains, it pours. We've got another shelf of these. Not only in order for 400 wedding cups, but a big order again from the olive tap. Now we actually could reuse some rain, so that's rather a confusing thing to say. How do we take that when it rains, it pours, and it hasn't been raining? Well, it has here in the pottery. Can I get it all done? And something else, I was down to my last one that the Olive Tap wanted was the chip and dip plates. Okay, so I need to get a batch of these going. Last one sitting around the studio to be fired. I need to get a batch of these going to the fall for the fall maybe we'll add some skulls to them this fall okay now here's another way of looking at it this I only put one coat of glaze on and all the others I did put a second coat on the inside and then dip the outside to there so um, it's the same glaze and I knew that I usually always have success with it no matter how ha hard um, or no matter what happens but it looks like a single coat and too thin can be just too thin so I think out of everything maybe this is the compromise maybe this is the way to go and then if things swing one way or the other we're still okay so this is just the first samples I think the the um, bottom I think it is a little too thin we are going to go a little thicker but it does show then all the throwing rings uh, the finger throwing rings include in addition to that on the bottom but I am very anxious about that and is getting this going I've got 400 of these to get fired this is only the first test batch I will get these to them so that they've got an idea of what is yet to come this is actually I think the bigger oh wow look at that one very nice very nice this is actually I think the biggest order for 350 pieces I, I used to do a marathon race okay I didn't run in it I made the winter cups 
I don't remember how many cups that was. I did that for many years uh, back in my last life as a potter. So, I think maybe this is the way to go. Maybe this is the compromise compared to that last uh, top shelf where it was so thick that we didn't see the wavy pattern and the black slip. So, maybe a radical idea, but I think we are going to go with the compromise. So, how should we go with it, one way or the other? What happens if they see it's a completely different way? How do you think it should go? I don't think I want to know. If you can be quiet, stop back and see what's going on in the studio next week.